This is Dave West with Teach Me 3D Printing, and we are going to build an XT60 connector cover. Uh, now, if you're into RC stuff, you're probably using XT60 connectors on your battery. Uh, I wanted a way to quickly tell at the field if I had a charged battery or not. So I made these connector covers. And I usually put the cover on the connector as it comes off the charger. Uh, so when I get to the field, I know quickly at a glance if I've got a fully charged battery or not. Uh, it also uh, protects the connector from getting dirt and debris in there. So um, pretty simple build. Let's start first by measuring the connector. Now depending on how your 3D printer is calibrated, what temperature you're using, uh, what filament you're using, you're, you're going to have to adjust your measurements. Now I'm using ABS and ABS tends to shrink a bit as it cools. So I'm gonna make these measurements a little bit bigger than they need to be. So for the width, I'm gonna make that seven millimeters. For the length, I'll do 14 and a half. And for that taper at the top, that'll be 3.8. And the taper is going to start about 3.2 from the edge. And I'm also gonna make the connector about 10 millimeters tall. All right, this is Autodesk 123D design. And real quick, as far as navigation goes, your right mouse button is going to orbit. Your middle mouse wheel, press it down, it's going to allow you to pan and scrolling your wheel in and out will let you zoom. So we're going to start building our connector cover with a 3D primitive. Go up here to our primitives and select box. And for the length, we're going to use seven. Tab is going to get the next field. We want to go 14.5 tab again and 10 and then enter now I want to get that taper that we had on the connector but in order to do that I need more geometry so I want to split it right here to kind of anchor this point so let's look at it from the front and I'm in perspective view right now it's gonna be a little bit easier if I go into orthographic view so if I right click I can go to orthographic view. And I want to make a cutting tool. I'm going to use a sketch polyline. Click and go right up here to the corner. Click my first one. And you'll see here it snaps at the straight line. So it doesn't matter how long I make it. Click right there. And to exit the tool, I want to click on exit mode right here. And there we are. Right click, go back into perspective. And if I highlight this, go up here to transform. I want to move this back 3.2 millimeters. Okay. Now I want to use this as a cutting tool to split this object in two. So I want to split my solid. The body I want to split is the box. The splitting entity or the tool is my polyline I made. And you can see the red cutting plane. I can click anywhere outside of it or I can hit enter and that's going to perform the cut. Let's highlight this and we can hit delete. Now I have two objects here. I want to select the front object, the small cut, go away from it come back in and select this edge. 
when I do that, my gear, that's my context menu, pops up. I want to go to tweak and pull that in. And let's type negative 1.9. And let's do the same thing to this one. Tweak. Pull it just a bit. Highlight it and negative 1.9. Okay. Deselect by clicking anywhere away from the box. And these two objects are still separate. I want to combine them together. So I'll go to my combine and it wants me to pick a target and a source. It really doesn't matter which one is which for this. Get them both and I can click anywhere out here to perform that. And now it's all one piece. Now this represents the connector. Okay, I want to make a connector cover. So I want to create a shell of three millimeters all the way outside to the outside of this. So I'll select it go out, come back in, and just select this top face. Open up my menu, and this time I want to go to Shell. Now I don't want to shell to the inside, I want to shell to the outside. And I want to make that 3 millimeters. And enter. Now it made a shell all the way 3 millimeters. I've got a 3 millimeter uh, wall all the way around even on the bottom. Okay. Now I could be done here, um, but I want to make a little, a little lip along the bottom to make this easier to uh, put on and off the connector. So let's look at it from the left. Right click, let's go to orthographic. And again, I want to make another cutting tool. Go right down here to the corner for the first point, for the next point, and exit. That's all I need to do. Back to perspective. And I want to take this and move it up to where the ground plane is. Now, when we extended or made that shell, it made three millimeters in all directions. So to get it back up to the ground plane, Go back up three millimeters. Enter. And again, I want to do another solid split. So the body is the box. The splitting entity is my polyline. And again, click out here. And it performs the cut. And I can get rid of my cutting tool. And there's my two objects. Now, that just made the split. It didn't make my lip yet. So let's select the bottom, go away, and select the faces or these side pieces. Select that, and then shift, select the next one, hold down shift, select that, shift, select that. I'm selecting with the left mouse button. All the way around open up my context menu and I want to press pull so I want to pull out three millimeters and there's my three millimeter lip click out here to deselect now these are still separate objects I want to combine them into one so again combine target source doesn't matter which is which and there you go. Now I still have the bottom of it below the ground plane. In order for this thing to print properly, it has to be sitting on the ground plane. So I can select it and just hit D to drop it to the ground plane. So there it is. One last thing I want to do is let's clean up these hard edges uh, with a chamfer. So with it selected, I'll select an edge. Shift select, shift, shift, and chamfer, and let's give it a 1.5 millimeter chamfer. Okay, that's it.
look at it from the top, zoom out. The last thing I want to do is bring this in the center. And that's it. We can get a home view by pressing on my home icon. And there you go. Let's export this as an STL. Export STL. Medium tessellation setting is fine. And give it a name. And that's it. All right, let's print. Now, this uh, video here is sped up about 5,000 times. Now, when I'm doing small items like this, I like to do more than one. What that does is it gives the layer of plastic that was just laid down a chance to cool a little bit and become a little bit more stable before it comes and lays another layer of plastic on top.